Hi, potential candidates. This is Laura Bellin. I am the publisher and primary author of the Iowa politics website, Bleeding Heartland, uh, which you can find at www.bleedingheartland.com. I have not run for office, so I wanna thank all of you for stepping up and thinking about it. It's a really big time commitment and it's so important to have good candidates. I have used social media for about the last 10 years. I have been very active on Twitter and Facebook and on an average day on my website, I would say probably more than 75% of my traffic comes from social media. So I am here to talk to you about using social media to support your campaign. And this can be for a campaign for any level of office. And so first I wanna talk about preparations before you officially launch. Then I wanna talk about how you would use Twitter and Facebook and Instagram during your campaign. And finally, I wanna say a few words about how to deal with trolls and harassment because we know, unfortunately, that is a common feature of social media in our time. So first of all, before you launch, really important to lay the groundwork and get your pages ready. Have a Facebook page, have a Twitter account. If you plan to use Instagram, get all of that set up and make sure that it says very clearly, for instance, on the about page, who you are, what office you're running for, and how people can contact you. It's very helpful if people going to your page can right away find a phone number or an email address, or preferably both, as a way to reach you. And I've seen candidates sometimes where they get ready, they go to a meeting, they announce that they're running, and they don't have the website up, or they don't have the Facebook, or they don't have an official statement. So it would be really good for you to have all of that ready to go, so that as soon as you're officially a candidate, there's some kind of statement there that you can put on Twitter, you can put on Facebook, and people will right away be able to find you. Also, I would consider making a trusted person an, administer, an administrator on your social media account. So you may be running such a small scale campaign that you don't hire a campaign manager, but I would suggest that you have a very a trusted friend or volunteer or maybe someone in your family who you give the password to log into your Twitter if needed. Make sure that person is approved as an admin on your Facebook page because you may need people to help you keep an eye on comments or communication and it's really helpful if you don't have to do all of that work yourself. Also, I would say before you launch your campaign, it's helpful to become active on social media already. So for instance, if you're on Facebook, um, I would hope that you're already active in some groups. Let's say you're thinking about running for school board. I would get active in groups talking about public education, pages related to the school district in your area. If you're thinking about running for the city council, again, there are probably some county organizations or uh, you have an Indivisible Iowa chapter. I would get active in those Facebook groups uh, possibly there's some kind of a local chat room or a subreddit. Try to be active there before you're a candidate so it doesn't just look like you arrived on the scene only when you're asking people for votes. I would also check your social media feeds Go back in history and see if there's anything that you wrote that could be taken out of context or used against you in a campaign. I mean, I wouldn't be overly eager to scrub things from your account. I think some people, some campaign advisors will say like, oh, you know, delete all of your old comments on websites. And I don't think you need to do anything that extreme, but we do know that opposition researchers, they go down people's social media feeds and they're always looking for an angle to try to attack someone. So if you were having a bad day a few years ago and you said something that maybe could be misconstrued, you know, it wouldn't hurt to go through and take down some of those posts, again, before you get ready to launch your campaign. Now, okay, uh, let's say now that you're already a candidate, you've got your Twitter feed, you've got your Facebook feed, how are you going to use social media to generate interest in your campaign? First of all, it's really important not to just expect people to regularly check your page. I mean, you need to be active in getting the message out there. So on Twitter, for instance, I would try to keep regularly posting. Don't only post about yourself, post, uh, share some links to other content that might be interesting to for your potential voters. Maybe there's a letter to the editor that you saw in your local newspaper that you want to share. And again, on Facebook, you want to be active. Don't be shy about sharing your content in Facebook groups where you think there are like-minded people. Don't be shy about asking people to like your page and share your posts. All of 
those things will help your content be seen by other people. And it does take time to build an audience. And I know that if you're running in a local race, you don't have a lot of time. You only have a few months really before the November election. So you want to have, um, if you have a, a group of friends or supporters, try to get those people to actively start helping boost your message in the early days to try to help you build up an audience fairly quickly. Now, uh, I again, I, I mentioned being active in Facebook groups, and I do think it's important to share your content in other groups. Uh, for instance, your Indivisible, or if there's an Action Iowa group in your area, uh, the Iowa Democratic Party has a Progressive Caucus group that's very receptive for people who are running uh, local campaigns. But I wouldn't be uh, I wouldn't be too active, like you don't want to be spamming these groups by every day posting something about yourself. But again, I mean, try to remember to get your message out there. Most people, when they're using Facebook, they're not going and, and specifically looking for your page. They'll just be seeing whatever is in their feed. And so it, it's very helpful for you to bring that message to people in groups. I would also engage with commenters. So and anyone who sends you a message, a direct message uh, through social media, definitely try to respond as long as it's not abusive and we'll get to that abusive content later. I would, if somebody makes a substantive comment, uh, try to respond even if you don't have much. It, it, it might just be like, hey, thanks for sharing that or it might just be thanks for noticing or you know, appreciate your support, something like that. People like to feel acknowledged and also the more activity there is on your thread, so as for instance Facebook, the more people are commenting on the thread, the more people will see that conversation in their own news feeds. So very important to be active and acknowledge people. Uh, keep the content fresh. One mistake that I see a lot of people on social media, and this actually applies to reporters as well as candidates, is they're only posting about themselves. So, you know, hey, I'm going to be speaking here on such and such a day or, you know, like, hey, please like my page or please give me money. There's nothing wrong with using social media that way, but you want people to have a reason to follow you. So if you can, you might want to set up even a Google News Alert. If your main issues are education and Medicaid privatization, you might want to set up some kind of Google News Alert that will send you every day emails with links about articles about Iowa Medicaid and then those would be things that you can share in your news feed or you might again looking for letters to the editor those are always really good content to share a lot of people don't get their the print edition of the newspaper anymore and sharing those things on social media can really be helpful I try on my Twitter feed to make sure that any day I mean less than half of what I post there is links to my own website and of course I am using Twitter to try to generate views for my website but no one is going to want to follow me on Twitter if the only things I'm ever posting are things that I said or things about myself. So I think that's really important. And the, the candidates who I've seen be very successful on social media have shared a lot of content about issues and not just about themselves. And once you get people following you, then it's fine to say again, like, hey, I'm going to be at a meet and greet here. You know, here's where you can come see me or looking forward to talking to the central committee at their meeting. Those kinds of things are all fine as long as it's not too big a share of your your feed. Now I spoke to uh, some candidates because like I said I haven't run for office myself and I spoke to Amber Gustafson who was an Iowa Senate candidate in the district where the Senate Majority Leader lives last year and she had a great social media operation so I would really recommend looking at her pages Amber for Iowa on Twitter and Facebook just to kind of see how it's done but she told me that she found it very helpful to schedule posts to go up on either Facebook or Twitter. I don't tend to do that. I tend to just post things when I'm sitting down at my computer. But if you're going to be spending a lot of time knocking on doors, talking to voters face to face, you may only have time in the early morning or late at night to be on social media and those might not always be the best times to post. So there are there are apps like Hootsuite and TweetDeck and Facebook allows you to schedule posts and that might be helpful for you to put some things up and that way, you know, at different times during the day, you'll have some new content on your site and it and that's also something where if you don't want to schedule a post, a trusted friend or volunteer can be helpful. Like like, hey, publish this at three in the afternoon or at five in the afternoon, sometime when you know a lot of people will be online. And you might want to experiment with different times of the day because I found sometimes posting late at night, I 
do get a lot of response to something. So it, it's, it is helpful to see you know, what works for you. But if you're always going to be busy and you'll only have a short window for social media, think about finding a way to put up content at different times of the day. Um, Amber also told me an, another thing that was interesting, Facebook Live, which allows you to post videos. This is a tool that I haven't used. And in fact, some campaign of uh, professional strategists would tell you not to do it because it's a little risky, right? You put up a live video, you don't know, maybe you'll stumble over your words or you might say something that's not quite right. But Amber was talking about, we, we were speaking about how authenticity is so important in campaigns. And she found she got a lot of engagement from using Facebook Live. So if you're at an interesting event and you want to just take a few minutes to, to put up a live video, it could be a successful tool for you. And Facebook does make that pretty easy to do. Um, I would be sparing about the posts that you pay to promote. As you get closer to the election, definitely worth uh, promoting some of your posts on Facebook and Twitter. However, you don't want to be constantly putting ads about yourself in somebody's newsfeed. People tend to find that a little bit off-putting. So uh, that, that would be a suggestion. And finally, I spoke with State Senator Claire Selsey. Also, uh, Claire Selsey has a tremendous social media presence. And again, I would look at her Twitter feed as Claire for Iowa and her Facebook page, Claire Selsey. I would look at how she's using it for tools. But one thing that she mentioned to me is be generous about giving attribution and sharing credit so tagging people if you see somebody else post something interesting on Facebook go ahead and share it and give that person credit or again if you're sharing a news article make sure to give credit or the letter to the editor mention the person's name because people do like that um, it shows that you're paying attention it shows that you're not only focused on yourself so uh, that that those are the main ideas I had about using social media during your campaign. And now I want to talk about the less pleasant side of social media. And in fact, something that leads a lot of people to completely turn off social media, and that is the online harassment. And unfortunately, if you are a woman, you're likely to be subjected to even more harassment than the typical male candidate. But I want to tell you that I don't be discouraged about using social media because there are ways that you can get around that. And I have found as a woman writing about politics, I really have had surprisingly few problems with uh, trolls and harassment compared to what a lot of other people have experienced. So the first rule is do not feed the trolls. Do not feed the trolls. So if somebody is a really annoying presence on your page and just likes to jump on every thread and just post something negative or on Twitter is constantly responding to you, I have an annoying guy who responds, tweets at me 20 or 30 times a day. I hardly ever have engaged with him but he still tries to get my attention. Just ignore those people. The more you engage with them, the more they find that attention encouraging. And if you have like overzealous supporters who like to argue with these people, try to quietly send private messages to those people and say, hey, you know what, just ignore so-and-so. You know, it's not worth arguing with this guy. I wouldn't be too trigger happy about banning and blocking. I know some opinions differ on this and some people are very quick. If someone's being irritating, just block them right away on Twitter. I feel like for a candidate, that's a bad look to be blocking a lot of people who criticize you. So I feel that ignoring is generally better. And blocking from your Facebook page also, I, I feel a little bit dicey as a campaign strategy. If the person isn't uh, being uh, really seriously harassing and not making overt threats. Of course, if they're making threats, make sure to report that because that's illegal. But if somebody's not um, doing a criminal level of harassment, I wouldn't block them from the page. I would report harassment as needed. Now, this was an interesting tip I got from Amber Gustafson again. You can set up your, you can filter certain keywords on Facebook. So you can set it up to filter any comments containing certain words, and there might be offensive rude names that people call you or you know certain things. You can just set it up so that Facebook right away hides those comments. And it's really interesting because the person who posted the comment won't see that it's hidden. That person will just see that the comment's there, but other people won't see it in the thread. And then you or your trusted administrator on the page can go through later and look at those hidden comments. And if it turns out that they weren't using that word in an offensive way you can go ahead and unhide it but it's a good way to deal with trolls without blocking
attacking them and without drawing more attention to them. So that was another uh, good suggestion. Amber also mentioned getting Twitter verified, which is something I haven't done, but on Twitter there's the blue check mark if you're kind of an <laughs> official person. And if you get Twitter verified, then you have certain privileges and settings that other Twitter users don't have access to. And Amber, who dealt with a lot of online harassment because of, some of you may not know, before she ran for the Iowa Senate, she was the Iowa chapter leader for Moms Demand Action, which is the uh, group for common sense gun reform. So you can just imagine the gun nuts have been after her for years. So she was able to set up some filters on her Twitter feed so that she just doesn't see comments and replies from certain people. So it's just less likely to get her down. It wasn't exactly blocking them, but it was just a way of dealing with the trolls. And again, that's something you can do without um, the people realizing it. Uh, the mute feature is another thing that you can do on Twitter without, if you block someone, they will know that you did that. But if you mute them, you won't see their comments, but they won't realize that you've muted them. So that's a good way to deal with trolls. And again, I'm, I'm just going to repeat this again, because it's so important not to feed the trolls. And I know it's very hard from my own experience. I know it's hard not to get drawn into those arguments. You feel like somebody has criticized you unfairly and they haven't understood what you've said and, and you know you want to try to set the record straight, but a lot of those people are not interested in a good faith argument. So if you try a few times and engage with a critic and this person is obviously just a troll, I would say start ignoring. And But again, I, I don't want to overstate the problem of harassment because I don't want to deter people from using social media. I really think that you can make social media work well for your campaign and not have a, a and not have a lot of problems with trolls and harassment. And again, especially if you're running in a local race, I don't think that trolls should be a big problem for you. So thanks very much for listening. Feel free to reach out for me at, through Facebook. I'm at Laura Bellin, uh, Bleeding Heartland, and Bleeding Heartland has its own page as well. So good luck.